Previously on Kings of the Ring, Tommy Aloha worries he's being buried by new booker Jesse James after losing the biggest match of his career and being split up with his longtime partner Hercules Harris for what he considers an undercard angle on the big Battle of the Stars Thanksgiving show, the main event of which features visitor Dan Sanders, who's in the midst of his free agent tour of the Alliance since departing the Empire after a 10-year run. After seeing top stars Michael Angel and Leroy Brown jump to the Empire and firing other promising young talents, Burt Ironside feels the pinch of his personnel decisions in 1984 with crowds down across the board, while Charlie Gotch has experienced a resurgence since bringing in Goliath for a championship run. In a desperate attempt to preserve his territory, Crusher Krawcheck threatened Julian Kane at gunpoint in front of the entire EWF locker room to stay out of the heartland. As everything builds towards Julian Kane's newest concept, a celebrity-focused wrestling show called Empire Mania. Meanwhile, Donnie Gold finds himself falling down the card. As he found out the hard way, he was bumped out of the Empire main event with Sylvester Stallone and apparently replaced by Killian Kavanaugh. Today's episode would be rated TV-14 for profanity and sexual references. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Kings of the Ring. Julian. 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 Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? This is it. You've shown me the provisions. If Empire Mania fails, you are finished. And Sal and Louis take, take over the company. Julian Kane stands behind a black curtain, taking deep breaths and staring into space, trying to focus. I've executed and participated in some remarkable gambles and achievements in this business, but none quite like this. Julian, it is an honor to be a part of this, and I salute you sincerely. You are a, a very impressive young man. Julian's concentration breaks for a moment as he is overcome by an unfamiliar feeling of warmth. This is your moment. This is your time. Off you go. Nigel moves him with his arm and sends him through. Julian Kane. Kings of the Ring, Episode 18. Thanksgiving. Biggest night in wrestling. The former Southeast Championship Wrestling ring announcer, Chase Sterling, introduces Julian and faces him with an outstretched arm and a big toothy smile as he steps out onto the ad hoc stage set up in the concourse of Madison Square Garden. The throngs of media and press greet him with a barrage of camera flashes and lights as Julian Kane revels in the moment. This year, the Empire Wrestling Federation became the wrestling version of the NFL by gathering the best wrestlers in the world under one banner and breaking all the barriers to bring the greatest show on earth to your local arena or your living room. The EWF can be seen nationwide on three cable stations, MTV, WBBS, The America Channel, and local stations all across the U.S. and Canada. The EWF is the standard for professional wrestling, and Empire Mania will be our Super Bowl. But my goals of innovation and originality extend even beyond creating the first ever wrestling super show, as Empire Mania will also be the first ever wrestling show presented on closed circuit TV, so fans across the country can watch live. And for the first time ever, celebrities will be part of a wrestling event. Billy Joel is going to sing the national anthem. Madonna will perform her latest chart-topping single live in the ring. Liberace will be there. Yankees legend Billy Martin. Muhammad Ali will be the first ever former boxing champion to referee in the main event, featuring the biggest box office champion in 
all of Hollywood, Sylvester Stallone, alongside his co-star of the upcoming Rambo picture and Empire Wrestling Federation heavyweight champion of the world, the American Viking Thor Hansen. And their opponents will be, from the jungles of Vietnam, Kong the Destroyer, and the Irish Hammer, Killian Kavanaugh. After the participants are introduced to the press corps, Julian and the wrestlers take a variety of questions, including a few tense moments. You act like no other wrestling exists outside the EWF, but there are many other alliance shows out Roaring Empire, and your ratings on WVP, yes, well, they can't even keep pace with all sound. Is that and Willie Williams of the Pro Wrestling Digest? Let me tell you something, Willie. No one here even knows what you're talking about and doesn't even care. Next question. Uh, how about you? I recognize you from the networks, right? Mr. King, this is Michael Slug from ABC's News Exposed. Are you prepared to admit that wrestling is fake? Excuse me? I have footage of multiple wrestlers admitting and revealing wrestling is complete phony baloney hogwash. Will you admit on camera that this is just a hoax, a complete sham? Empire Wrestling is the greatest show on earth. What? However, if you wish to engage in a more articulate debate on that subject, I would refer you to my PR director, a wrestler named Crusher Krawcheck. On Thanksgiving, you'll be wrestling at the St. Louis Arena, and he will eagerly discuss this with you, Mr. Sluck. Remember the name, Crusher Krawcheck. Find him there, and bring your camera crew. But make sure you come at him strong right out of the gate, or he won't even take you seriously. And of course, the wrestlers of the main event are out there entertaining the press. Killian Kavanaugh has been on fire all morning, getting chuckles out of the New York reporters, while Thor and the others do what they do. I came here to shut this man up, this little rat, this little weasel. He's a hard man in groups. But all alone, he cowers away, and that's what you saw on MTV. Kong destroyed 15 ribs on his body, crushed him into powder, but he made one big mistake. He didn't kill me, because the American Viking is back, and I still got fight left of me to send him all the way back to Vietnam. Tor Hansen's been ducking me ever since I got here. He knows that belt is mine, but I got bigger things to deal with. Like this Italian stallion stepping into my ring, my playground, my home, and thinking he has any right to be here. You have no idea what you're in for, brother. We are going to bounce you around like a basketball. <laughs> is it fair that your first wrestling match is against these uh, veteran wrestlers? Hey, let me tell you something you already know. The world... You know, sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place. And I don't care how tough you are, it will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. You, me, or nobody is gonna hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. But you gotta be willing to take the hits. Yeah, problem is my hit's gonna feel like a double barrel shotgun. <laughs> Julian Kane is celebrating at the Four Seasons with his brain trust, Les Henderson and Nigel Davies, along with a team of lawyers at the bar. Definitely a gamble, gentlemen, as this show relies far more on celebrities and spectacle than actual wrestling. The main event is the only match we have booked so far. The main event is the draw. The only draw. And it'll be the only match that anyone remembers anyway. But we do have another problem. You might not have caught that, but I believe Willie Williams was about to bring it up. All South Wrestling just started on WVBS. What? On the Sunday night slot. Oh. Henderson asks as he takes a drag from his cigarette. Apparently, our VBS rights aren't exclusive, and this is Jack Valiant's way of appeasing the protesters in the <clears throat> lower ratings from the Saturday show. 
Apparently, it's pulling higher ratings than ours, even on the different day. I did tell Jack that we'll put more focus on the VBS show after Empire Mania. I guess he got impatient. You need to get that taken care of, Nigel. I'm not sharing anything, even if it is that worthless station. Well, I'm worried about something else, fellas, because I, I gotta ask the question. Do we need to be worried about Kenny? What do you mean? Can we trust him? He's a bit of a wild card, don't you think? That's just his style, but it draws heat. Going off script? Going into business for himself? If there's one thing about Dinah Gold, we could always trust him. Julian rolls his eyes as he downs his shot. I mean, Killian was really pushing it today with those reporters, almost making Stallone look stupid and babyfacing himself. Worst case scenario, Killian shoots on Stallone. We still benefit because he's an Empire wrestler. And we'd never be able to book a celebrity ever again, and my name is Mud all throughout Hollywood. Absolutely not. Is he Empire, though? Killian says he'll cooperate, but I know for a fact you don't like an actor coming in working the main event. Well, shit, none of the boys do. Except his buddy Thor, of course. But think about it. What if he knocks out Sylvester Stallone in Madison Square Garden, makes headline news everywhere, and then went back to Charlotte, or Dallas, or Milwaukee? He already walked out on Atlanta. Who's to say he won't do it to us? Because he knows I made him, and no one can give him the exposure I do. I don't think Killian cares about exposure. He cares about money, no matter where it comes from. Leslie does raise an interesting point. Have you ever considered contracts? Contracts? <laughs> In wrestling? I want to be able to fire anyone I want, when I want. I also don't like the idea of guaranteeing pay to anyone. What if they're injured? I shouldn't have to pay them a red cent. That's not fair. The contracts don't have to be guaranteed. They can be written however you want to give you the most leverage. I have contacts in sports management and Hollywood who can draft a contract so one-sided and overloaded with legal jargon and doublespeak, the boys won't have a clue what they're signing. Hmm. Now that's something I can sink my teeth into. But I'm still not comfortable with them having any rights or leverage at all. What's next? You're going to want a union? This does bring up another point, Julian. I am doing far more for Empire than I signed up for, and Leslie can't do everything. Are you going to bring in any more help to run the locker room? You've taken wrestlers from the Alliance. Why not take someone from the office, like uh, Peyton Thomas from All South? That's an interesting idea, Nigel. After Empire Mania, I will address that, and I appreciate all that you're doing in the meantime. Since you first met with me on Miami Beach, you've done all that you promised, and so much more. I'm not sure Empire would be where it is right now, if not for you. Thank you, Julian. By the way, Julian, think it might be a little dangerous making all them claims about Empire Mania and for all them fancy New York reporters? What claims? You know, uh, Empire Mania, the first ever supercard, uh, Empire, the only company in the world, Empire, first day of celebrity. Julian walks closer to Henderson, staring a hole through first his head. First to do closed circuit. Uh, Muhammad Ali, first boxer to do wrestling. Let me uh, educate you, Henderson. I don't care if the CWA technically invented the supercard with Battle of the Stars, or that Jesse James was the first one to do closed circuit TV. Reality and truth mean nothing. History is written by the winners and those with the loudest voice. And when I've won this war, and I will win this war, I guarantee you, for the rest of time, the wrestling fans and media will repeat what I want them to say. Be it a made-up attendance figure, the height of Thor Hansen, or who did something first. For decades, they will repeat what I say as complete gospel Got it? Yes, sir. As for the CWA beating us to the punch with Joe Frazier as the referee for James Sanders, I say to you, if a tree falls in the forest and there's nobody there to hear it, did it actually make any noise? <laughs> no one outside that tiny territory will even know about it. Julian downs another shot. <sighs> Jesse James is a fool. Celebrities bring people from the outside to your show. 
That is their value. Instead, Jesse is only presenting Joe Frazier to the fans that watch them every week anyway. What's the point? Well, it's geared to their fans. Uh, giving them hope that Jesse could take Smoking Joe or something. And I'm gearing my show to the outsiders. Which is why I'm celebrating my Madison Square Garden show from the friggin' Four Seasons, while Jesse James is celebrating their rinky-dink Thanksgiving hoedown with a six-pack in the back of a pickup. All of those Alliance fools building their entire year around one show on Thanksgiving, hoping for their biggest house of the year. <laughs> We're running Boston that night, right, Nigel? Yes. Julian downs another shot. And once again, we're sold out like we are any other night of the year. It's Thanksgiving across America. Families gather to eat too much food and watch the Detroit Lions and the Dallas Cowboys. And when the turkey and pumpkin pie has been eaten, everyone's had their after-dinner cigarette, and all the leftovers are packed away with tinfoil and Tupperware in the fridge, it's time to put on the coats and head out to the matches. The tradition has grown year after year, peaking in 1983, when the seven major cities of the World Wrestling Alliance, their satellites in Portland, Detroit, and Ohio, and outlaw shows in California, Detroit, and elsewhere, were responsible for over 150,000 fans in America watching live wrestling in one night. A feat that would never be matched ever again. And a year later, with many outlaw towns and Alliance satellite groups gobbled up by the Empire, the remaining Alliance promotions pull out all the stops, with most drawing their biggest gates of the year. In Dallas, All South Wrestling isn't sold out like last year, but still their biggest house of 1984. Over 13,000 fans in Reunion Arena to see All South Wrestling and the new Angel Boys with Father Burt Ironside making a rare appearance at ringside. Same story for Heartland in St. Louis. At least 14,000 fans still showed up, despite the Empire's debut here not long ago, to watch Crusher Krawcheck in the main event. But some towns are strong as ever. At the Mid-South Coliseum, yet another sold-out show in Memphis, Tennessee, to see grizzled veteran top babyface and owner of Wild Wild Wrestling, Raylan Crenshaw, in a wild four-man brawl. 13,000 packed the Mecca Arena in Milwaukee for Goliath, retaining the AMW American Championship against Hollywood Buddy Melrose. And even with 15,000 people packing the Boston Garden to see Thor Hansen in the Empire Wrestling Federation, the biggest show of Thanksgiving 1984 was at the Coliseum in Greensboro, North Carolina for CWA's third annual Battle of the Stars, which saw the second consecutive sellout crowd of 18,000 fans to see Jesse James defend the WWA world title against the All-American Dan Sanders with Smokin' Joe Frazier as special referee. In the semifinal, Tommy Aloha versus his longtime partner and friend who betrayed him last month, Hercules Harris. Stop that, motherfuckers! Tommy Aloha fired up and bathed in sweat, his lean bodybuilder physique glistening with sweat and blood from his forehead. He's so fired up, he almost knocks over beautiful Barry Lovelace and Chief Waylon Thorpe who are changing. Tommy looks at Daniel Hawkins, owner of the CWA. You see what we did out there? Hercules crashes a door open. Tommy meets him with a handshake and they hug, slapping sweat on anyone in range. We had those people in the palm of our fucking hand. Those 20,000 paid to see us beat the shit out of each other. This kind will main event. Not those other fuckers. This kind. You know this, Danny. You need to pay us. You'll be getting paid, Tommy. We appreciate you. What about this closed circuit gimmick from last month? They say 50,000 watched that match. But you pay me for 15,000 people. Just let it go, Tommy. You're working yourself into a shoot. We don't have all the money from the locations. You'll get that separate later. The money is coming. You have to be patient. Hey, Bala. When Tony Gold left. When Kavanaugh left. When Jerry left. 
we stay here and make the CWA big as it's been in years. Me and this guy, Jesse James, outsider. Old ass Dan Sanders, outsider. We more better. We should be main event with main event green. Jesse is also the world heavyweight champion. Of course he's in the main event. He's working the last Empire Champion. This is a historic match, fitting for the Battle of the Stars. Great match, Tommy, as always, but I need to see this main event. Excuse me. Tommy slams a locker door and squirts his water bottle all over himself. He straddles the bench and puts a towel over his head, while Hercules rests his back against the wall. Brother, we need to strike now while the iron is hot. You see fucking Kavanaugh on MTV and shit. I could make money working Kavanaugh or Donnie Gold instead of work popcorn match for Mucky Muck Jesse James night after night. Those guys must be making so much bread. Come on, man. Last month was the biggest payoff of my life. We making more than we ever made. That's today, Bob. We need to think future. In St. Louis, Crusher Krawcheck. Still red-faced, bleeding, and fired up from the brutal main event he just worked for the Thanksgiving crowd, makes his trek down the hallway to the locker room when he's intercepted by the bright spotlight of a TV camera, along with ABC News reporter Michael Sluck. Mr. Crusher Crotchet. Yeah, that's me. What's all this? Who are you? My name is Michael Sluck from ABC News Exposed, and I'm conducting an investigation on the sport of wrestling. Because my sources tell me it's 100% fake. Oh, you're one of those. Do you know a wrestler named K.J. Parker? Yeah, I remember him. I interviewed Mr. Parker at length. And he not only admitted that wrestling was fake, he even demonstrated in a ring with me how it's choreographed and that the promoter actually tells him who wins and who loses these matches. Is that what he told you now? It's all one big joke, isn't it? One of the great scams in all of entertainment. And you are a huckster. Michael Sluck sticks his finger right in Crusher's face. Like P.T. Barnum in the circus. So my question to you is, how does it feel to make fools out of 10,000 people in this arena with this farce? Are you satisfied selling this fake garbage to these fake Crusher open hand slaps the reporter with the force of a truck, sending him crashing to the floor. Does that feel fake to you? And looks up in fear at the menacing wrestler, covered in sweat and blood, as Crusher steps over him and walks away angrily. Who let this guy back here anyway? While most people go home for the night on Thanksgiving after the show, the wrestlers go straight to the bar with their wallets freshly filled from the biggest night in wrestling. In Greensboro, young Chris Stanley, as Dan Sanders' driver, gets to tag along with the CWA crew. Chris, come here. Chris anxiously trots over from the far side of the bar, bottle of Meisterbrow beer in hand, as he patiently and respectfully awaited his verbal invite. Jesse, this is Bert's nephew, Chris Stanley. Chris's eyes get wide as he looks up at the six foot three inch barrel chested everyday hero Jesse James in person. Jesse holds out his hand to shake as Chris looks up at the large white bandage splayed above his eye. It, it, it's such an honor to meet you, Mr. James. I'm such a big fan of yours. Well, well howdy, little buckaroo. So, uh, so what's your favorite match of mine? Um. I'd have to go with Bob Walker versus Chief Waylon Thorpe from the Omni last year. Uh, I wasn't in that one, sir. Jesse chuckles as he winks at Dan Sanders. I know, but, but I'm more of a fan of your booking, actually. That angle that turned Thorpe was just excellent. I can only read about it in the digest and on the tape. Hold up. You're that nephew of Burke's. I'm sorry, kid. I thought you was a... Uh... Well, anyway, now Dan here tells me that his promo was a drizzling shit till you stepped in. That promo was money, and he says you were the one that brought it out of him. Showed him a, a proper way to sell the kid. Um, yeah, thanks. Kind of small, but uh, are you a wrestler, a manager, an announcer, or anything? No, sir. Well, if you ever learn how to work, let me know. Well, um, one thing, Mr. James, if I may. Kid, call me Jesse. 
Okay, Jesse, um, there's a wrestler I know that might be perfect for what you're doing here with the CWA. Um, he worked for my uncle and was fired because he got a, a because, because he didn't fit the mold of the typical Burt Ironside wrestler. But he's very athletic, a, a quick learner in the ring, great shape, good looking guy. He does like a, a rock star gimmick, uh, but very over with the girls and he lives in Georgia. Okay, who is he? His name is Bobby Rivers. It's hours after close at the Major Goolsby Sports Bar in Milwaukee. Patrons are long gone. It's only the wrestlers remaining, which is routine for the owner to let the AMW wrestlers remain after their mecha shows down the street, ever since Diamond Donnie Gold introduced the idea years ago. And while Charlie Gotch drove back home to nearby Muskego as soon as the gate was counted, son Nellie Gotch is still working. More specifically, taking care of their champion and top draw, the 7-foot, 400-pound Goliath. Oi! Goliath sits back in his chair against the wall, strewn with Brewers and Milwaukee Bucks memorabilia beside various mirrors with logos of Miller, Pabst, and Jim Beam printed on them. Still with him are Bull Von Heimer, Mr. Shimasaki, and Jason Metoxin, one of the Tomahawk Indians. On the table is stacked over 50 empty beer mugs, all drunk by the giant, with foam and warm amounts of leftover beer in each glass. Bet you never seen this much piss before, Nelly. Goliath picks up a new beer with a giant catcher's mitt he calls a hand. To me, and another sellout. The wrestlers crash their glasses together and salute to the man who drew the house and slammed their beers. Goliath's 12 ounces of beer disappears like a magic trick as he effortlessly inhales what looks like a shot glass in his grasp. Come on, Nelly. You need to do better than that. Nelly belches and looks at his beer, which is still half full. You're gonna drink with me. You need to drink with me. Sorry, Don. I think I've had my fill. Don, you think we're mates now? You call me Don. Sorry, Mr. Logan. I think I've had enough tonight. You've had enough when I say you've had enough. I told you to drink with me tonight, and that's what you're gonna do. Nelly throws the glass to his face and finishes the beer, and slams it down on the table, and sways back and forth. Nelly Welly, fucking Nelly. That's not good enough. Goliath looks around. Oi, Tomahawk, hand me that picture. Jason, on his own, a monster of a man standing six foot three inches and 280 pounds, looks like a kid walking over to the massive Goliath and hands him one of the pitchers of beer, which is about three quarters full. Skull that fucking beer. Uh, I can't do that, Mr. Logan. Nelly sways around, looks up and sees the other wrestlers watching him. I don't care what you can or cannot do. You're going to do it. Because I said so. Nelly picks up the pitcher. Some are laughing, while some of the others look around awkwardly and uncomfortable. He puts the pitcher up to his face and begins chugging. Beer slurps and splashes all over his face and neck as he finishes the beer and drops the pitcher to the floor, with the leftover beer spilling all over his lap. Now that's more like it. The room spins as Nelly Gotch tries to focus on Goliath's round, bald head, which spins around madly. His stomach turns and twists, and Nelly throws up all over himself. <coughs> Nelly leans back against his chair as the other wrestlers laugh with chunks of thanksgiving all over his lap, face, and chest. Nellie's eyes are bloodshot, glossy, completely gone. He rocks back and forth, his face red and sweaty, his thinning hair a mess. Look at you, a fucking disgrace. Your father is ashamed of you, he is. Nellie hears Goliath's words between the loud ringing in his ears. You can't work. You're not very smart. Too skinny for a wrestler, a real wrestler. No kind of physique. All you're good for is wiping me ass. Nelly's bloodshot eyes begin to roll back. 
You can't even get me proper oars anymore. What happened, you fucking cunt? Maybe it'd be better if you brought your wife to me. Give her a real man for once. Know what I mean? Nelly perks up and looks at Goliath, staring him down despite swaying back and forth. There we go. You are still there. Nelly takes a beer bottle and breaks it on the edge of the table and points it at him. Goliath stands up. You gonna do something, Nelly? You finally found your balls? The boys anticipate something until they hear the snores of Nelly, who just passed out. Mouth wide open, vomit dribbling out of it. I'm done. You, bar owner, get me my car and take me to my hotel. I'll see you boys at Christmas. Christmas? Does Charlie know that? Bull von Heimer asks in shock. I'm working a show in Puerto Rico for Carlos. Then I'm off to fulfill my obligations to Japan. Which are more important than this. Fuck Nelly and his old man. I said I'll be back at Christmas. So I won't be back until bloody Christmas. Even though it's still dark this early morning at Logan International Airport in Boston... Donnie Gold is still wearing sunglasses along with his custom-made suit. He is Diamond Donnie Gold, after all. It's all part of the look. He flags down Julian Kane, who's picking up a newspaper. Julian, so who am I working at Empire Mania? I don't know yet. Am I even working the show? Yeah. Am I? What is your problem? My problem is... The standard in this company is the undefeated WWA World Heavyweight Champion, ready for the biggest money tour in professional wrestling against Thor Hansen. Other than a few tune-up matches, it never happened. You said it happened on MTV, but then that gets changed. Then you say it'll be Empire Mania, and then that got changed. I don't know, Julian. It seems like there's always something knocking me down a peg, and I want to know where I stand. Because, I gotta tell you, I feel like I'm being buried. I just made you the Intercontinental Champion last night, trying to rebuild you. Yeah, and I had to use brass knucks to win it, over Tarzan. The people won't take me seriously if I have to do that. If the fans don't take you seriously, it's because you're a clown, Donnie Gold, and a mark for yourself. Whoa. You know what? Let me give you some real news here. He holds up his newspaper and points at the headline as if you were reading from it. Donnie Gold, not as good as he thinks he is. He puts it down and looks at Donnie. You are the classic big fish from a little pond. You read your little pro wrestling digest and hear a pop from a hundred marks in a TV studio in Atlanta. And you take that to mean you're a top guy. But you came to the major leagues of the Empire Wrestling Federation and found out that you are just a little fish. Then why'd you even hire me? Why'd you start me out on top? What can I say, Donnie? I was a mark for you too. But when I see the reactions from the fans and those soft crowds from our Southeast tour, the places you were supposed to draw, and the shrinking ratings on VBS, it turns out we were both wrong, and you really are just mid-card filler. Junior, I've headlined shows. Where? In Rock Hill, South Carolina? In Tupelo, Mississippi? We are in Boston. We play Los Angeles, Chicago, New York. Major markets that matter. Guys like Thor Hansen and Killian Kavanaugh have that special it factor that got themselves over on the national stage. You don't have it. Oh yeah? Just then, a small group of wrestling fans point at Donnie Gold and they run over like they've seen the Beatles. As they approach, Donnie shakes his mane of bleached white flaxen hair and straightens out the collar of his suit. As they run straight past Donnie to the magazine rack behind him, where we see a row of People magazines with Thor Hansen on the cover. Julian looks at Donnie Gold and fails to hide his condescending smirk. 
shakes his head and walks off. Donnie looks down at the ground, hurriedly takes off his sunglasses and stuffs them away. As he quietly walks to his gate, wondering if Julian Kane might be 100% right about him. Julian Kane steps into the first class section of his Eastern Airlines flight. He unbuttons the jacket of his suit and sits next to Nigel Davies, who's reading the latest issue of Variety. That thing we talked about before, the contracts? Let's do it. I want everybody locked up long term, so no one can escape, and they belong to me, and I can do whatever I want with them. Starting with Diamond Donny Gold. Oi, Donny, Donny, Donny. Hey, did anyone else pop when Chris Stanley told Jesse James to give Bobby Rivers a call? Anyway, here we are, folks. Only two episodes remain for the Kings of the Ring. Episode 20 will be the series finale. And episode 19 will be Empire Mania. Thor Hansen and Sylvester Stallone versus Killian Kavanaugh and Kong the Destroyer in Empire's closed-circuit debut. And remember, Julian Kane really needs to hit a home run and make enough money with this one show to make up for all the losses of the year. Will this gamble pay off? It's another special episode of Kings of the Ring, singularly dedicated to the biggest show in Kings vs. Wrestling history. It's episode 19, Empire Mania. <laughs> <laughs> 